You know that stage in a remodeling or reorganizing project where it's gonna look worse before it looks better? That's how my projects are right now. Everything, everywhere in what looks to the untrained eye like total chaos. But it's all going to fall into place and this is the week. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. And in today's video, I'm making sense of all the chaos that is swirling around me. Hang around, let's see what happens. Oh guys, it has been such a creative week. I finally am getting some traction and it feels great to see it all coming together. I do feel like I'm on the edge of chaos, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it doesn't feel like an oncoming train. I've got all of my blocks completed for Indigo Way. I made the 72 basic blocks, no partials and no border, and I'll lay that out and get the top assembled tomorrow. Oh, it feels good to finally have that underway. I got started on my remixed geese sewing. Now don't panic, you're not sewing yet. I have to stay ahead for filming, but we're still in cutting and kidding, so no rush. I finally got all the red and white, look, oh my goodness, they're everywhere, half square triangles trimmed. Or actually, so I thought, until I moved to my ironing station and I found a whole handful of them on the floor and a navy blue one, left over from last time, but they're quick and I'll take care of them tonight. I'm getting more kits pulled together and made up so I can sew and sew and sew, which I love. I am binding this adorable dinosaur quilt for our modern guild and I'm really glad to have some hand sewing to work on. It's been a minute. What else? Oh, we finally got the long arm straightened out. We were having a thread issue and I was afraid we would need a service technician. I did all the things. I re-threaded, I oiled, I re-threaded the bobbin, rewound the bobbin in case that was the issue, changed the needle. No, no avail. Still having issues. Every time I changed the needle, I was having the same issues. Then I picked a needle from a different package. Problem solved. I had a bad pack of needles. Like, I've had one bad needle, but I've never had like a whole package that was bad. And I had tried three from this package and they were all garbage. I'm really glad that problem is solved. Thank goodness. Because there is a growing pile up at the long arm. I also got my studio rearranged to make a bit of room for this. A gift for my hubby and I like it so much. This space needs a bit of an overhaul right now, but that's coming and the workflow is going to be so much better. I am so excited. I'm like more excited than is reasonable for this piece of furniture. Oh, there were some fantastic points in the comments this week. Jean and several other people pointed out that I forgot to include binding prep in my cutting and kitting, and that's true. I bind nearly everything with a signature red and white polka dot, so I didn't even think about it. But binding is another sticky wicket to finishing quilts. It's a place where they get stalled. So don't get caught out and go ahead and plan and prep your binding with your kit. Thank you guys so much for the notes. Another thing, I love what Martha said about fabric. That waste isn't waste, but overhead. It's the cost of doing business, the cost of quilting. And you know what? She is absolutely right. I am changing my vocabulary around fabric usage because perspective really is important. It's not waste, it's part of quilting. Thank you, Martha. There was lots of great feedback about the AccuQuilt. Thank you so much. And one question that I got again and again, and I want to address specifically. Grab this. With the exception of strip cutting, fabric needs to run through the AccuQuilt along the lengthwise grain. And the reason for that is because there's ever so slight compression that happens in, in the roller process, in the cutting process. 
and that can stretch your fabric if you run it through on the crosswise grain. How do you tell the difference? If you don't have the selvage to tell you which is the lengthwise grain, that's the length of the fabric, like the yardage cut, versus across with the fabric. How do you tell? How do you tell, especially if you have scraps? The way you find the grain line of your fabric is you snap it between your hands. And you can both feel and hear the difference. Along the lengthwise grain, there's little to no stretch and it will make this noise. That high pitched sort of pinging noise. Now along the crosswise grain, there will be more stretch and it will make a noise similar to this. It's a little lower pitched, kind of a wonky noise. In fact, that's how IQ Quilt describes it. High and tight or low and wonky. And that lower noise is the crosswise grain. I do this even for the little pieces that I'm loading up on my one and a half inch square die. So I know this is, this is my crosswise grain. So I will feed the die through the machine in this direction along the lengthwise grain. A while back, I was asked about my storage containers for my 10 inch squares and charms. I use these guys and they are called Room Essentials, which I think is a Target brand. They used to be very inexpensive and available at Target. Sadly, it seems they're not available at Target or anywhere. I think they're a Target made product. But they were inexpensive. I think this was $2.99. They hold the 10 inch squares look perfectly. And they were great. And I'm sorry that I can't link that and they're not available. The new bins that seem to have replaced those are these. And look, aren't they pretty? They're very nice. They're very uniform. But what they aren't is 10 inches square. You see how those corners curve up? There you go. You see how those corners come, curve up in the edges? And that's very disappointing. I'll link them anyway in case, you know, in case you need them for something else. Like I say, they're inexpensive, they're good for other things, but they're not 10 inches square. I don't have a, a different solution for 10 inch squares. If any of you guys have a great solution for storage for 10 inch squares that, you know, is available, please, please leave it in the comments below. It's a solution that many of us that many of us are still looking for. Mary Mabel Market has a great video about how she sorts and stores scraps. I especially love her solution for two and a half inch squares, and I'll link that video down below. But it's really a matter of just what works for you. There was lots of mention about making test blocks before cutting everything out, and that's a very good practice. I don't do it, but it's a good practice. Some said I was very confident to do this, and I replied, you know, kind of flippantly or tongue-in-cheek, that I have a great deal of blind faith. And I do, but it's, it's, it's more than that. I don't have a great deal of confidence in a pattern, and I certainly don't think my cutting skills are infallible. They are not, I assure you. But I do have a great deal of confidence in myself. And not in an arrogant way, like I think I can do anything. It's... <laughs> My, my friends are laughing right now. <laughs> but I have confidence that whatever problems I might encounter, I have enough creative moxie to work through whatever challenges arise. I like that. And so I cut everything at once because that's what works for my workflow. I'm comfortable with the not knowing. If I need to pivot or recut or figure it out, I'll do it as I go. I got some happy mail this week, you guys. Gina sent this to my P.O. box. It is a beautiful wooden tailor's clapper and it's smooth and heavy and thank you so much. It's gorgeous. It's also laser etched with a special message and I'll put a picture in right here. Can you see this? I don't know how sensitive YouTube is about such things so I won't read it out loud but y you get it. Casey and I laughed so much, and every time I see it over here on my ironing cart, I get the giggles. 
Gina, you really get my sense of humor. Thank you so much. Oh, I, there were also these. I didn't even know cinnamon Jolly Ranchers were a thing. And they taste exactly like Big Red Chewing Gum if you've ever had that. And I love them. They're delightful. Thank you so much, Gina. It was totally unexpected and I adore it. This week, I am super motivated to keep working and to rearrange my space a bit and finally get some quilts off the frame. Man, that's been nagging me. And I'm so glad we got it sorted without having to call a technician. I have more kits to make and more color cards to use as inspiration. I have scraps that need managing. And you know what? I'm actually kind of looking forward to digging in. Except, y'all, that blue bin is already full. Again. Uh, blue, man. Blue. I have the Indigo Way layout and Assembly to solve and just so many fun things. We've got cold, crappy weather for the next few days. So I'm just gonna lean in to being home and enjoying the studio work. I don't know, maybe I'll make some vegetable soup and a grilled cheese. That sounds good, really. Yes, yes, vegetable soup and grilled cheese. That's great, and it gives me a transition. Let me know in the comments what your favorite cold weather cozy meal is. Maybe I'll get inspired. Of course, it'll probably turn out like that cookie question and I'll just be starving while reading all your good ideas at 10 o'clock, but you know, what the heck? I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Let me know your favorite cold weather cozy meal. Bring it on. The process quilt along this week is sewing and pressing with a special feature about labeling quilts. I'm really enjoying the breakdown quilt along and I hope you are too. I also hope that this week and always that you never forget you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.